So, yeah, welcome to our presentation of an application scenario evaluating measures for prioritizing urban public transport, a case study of a corridor in Münster, Germany. So, what is the motivation uh, behind this uh, research? Um, meeting climate targets can only be achieved through comprehensive uh, reduction and rethinking of our transport. Um, so, moreover, the accessibility of to urban centers uh, is crucial for economic development and uh, social participation. Uh, so the strengthening of public transport and expanding the uh, transport access to connect the more rural regions uh, of the outer city districts uh, is crucial. Um, public transport can play a decisive role um, in achieving the reduction of emissions by reducing the land uh, use uh, due to the concentration of transport, as we can see here on this slide, um, and um, increasing the transport capacity. Um, pu public transport uh, contributes to less congestions, less pollution, uh, also reduce noise, and for example, better air quality. Um, but to achieve this, the number of people transported uh, must be increased. The quality, enhanced accessibility and rel reliability uh, should also be improved. But in order to implement a sustainable and directive service, um, public transport must be uh, competitive. However, due to the orientation or the long-term orientation of our networks, transport networks, towards the needs of the private transport, uh, buses have to wait uh, at traffic lights because the green waves often implemented in cities uh, are not compatible with waiting times at bus stops, for example. Um, and so we often have, uh, the buses often have to wait at the red lights and also are um, held up by other vehicles on the uh, open road. And this leads to significant delays, uh, especially during the peak hours of the day, um, and thus, yeah, reducing the attractiveness of our public transport. So our study uh, area was located uh, on the Wies Weserstraße in Münster, uh, with buses of line X90 and S90 uh, using this route. Um, the measures are implemented uh, at and in between the two uh, junctions of Geiststraße and Molkestraße. Um, and in order to investigate the impact, a local 700 meter influence area is defined in addition to a network wide consideration. So let's take a brief look at the initial situation. Um, here you can see some um, GPS recordings or some GPS traces of real buses traveling this route. Um, they start at, uh, at the highway exit um, and uh, drive into the city center. And we can see that most of the delays uh, occur at the uh, traffic lights, but also some are uh, on the open road, especially in the morning peak hours. Um, so to reduce these delays, there can be several concepts applied. Um, for example, the uh, temporal measures such as traffic light priori prioritization um, with designs such as the green tire modification, special phases, or a gatekeeper system, um, which is meant to keep an entire street section free of any vehicles. But also uh, spatial measures such as bus lanes in various designs, uh, for example, permanent or dynamic and intermittent and directional and non-directional, um, so driving in the opposite direction. But there are also some mixed forms that combine the temporal and the spatial measures. Um, these are hybrid forms, for example, uh, bus gates in front of traffic lights. So uh, as a methodology, we used uh, SUMO to implement or to um, research our measures. Um, and therefore, we built a base case for the network, we used an open drive model that was exported from a program called Roadrunner. Um, and the uh, traffic demand uh, was collected by uh, detector loops uh, that are placed at the traffic lights for each traffic flow. Um, the initial routes were then obtained uh, using random trips to, or the random trip script um, and an adjusted weighted source and destination matrix um, to improve the initial routes. 
Um, the final demand, traffic demand, was then sampled with the root sampler algorithm uh, or the root sampler tool. Um, simulation parameters were obtained using uh, video evaluation um, of some video recordings on the site or at the uh, research area. Uh, afterwards, we calibrated the base uh, model um, using the um, uh, using number of routes, uh, the uh, actual demand uh, determined by the recordings, so that we uh, could measure uh, evaluating the video recordings, and also the real bus travel time um, through the GPS recordings. Um, and you can see here a good comparison between the real world data and uh, the calibrated um, bus travel times. Um, and you can see that there's a pretty good visual match um, with many waiting times uh, at um, the traffic lights, and also in some cases, as in the real world, uh, we have some delays in the approach to the second junction. So, uh, a total of 13 scenarios were examined. Um, I will present three of these that are the most interesting ones, um, and all measures were implemented with uh, Tracy using Python. Um, the first measure is a dynamic gatekeeper system. Um, so if the bus is approaching the bottleneck, which is uh, between the two junctions uh, on, on this section of the street, um, we, the, the system becomes active and we check for the length of the uh, congestion. So if there are any congestions in this area, um, the bus can't use this route um, because the bus is uh, turning right here. Um, and uh, yeah, because of congestion in this area, um, the uh, area is blocked. Um, so depending on the result, different scenarios are active, uh, activated. However, uh, the inflows are always blocked before the bus arrives. So the personal um, transport lanes are blocked and only the bus lane uh, gets a clearance. Um, and the outflows uh, are, uh, get a green uh, signal. Uh, to clear the area in between. The following video shows uh, the uh, scenario of the, the uh, measure. Here is our, our bus um, that we are researching, the uh, bus of line X19. Um, here is the bus lane, um, and this is the section um, with our gatekeeper system. So the entrance uh, is blocked when the bus arrives, like in this area, uh, and the uh, exits uh, get a green signal. OK, we can't uh, use the media, that's uh, unfortunately. But um, yeah, well, then, we, then my talking uh, has to uh, yeah, do it. Um, but the results were pretty good. Um, as you can see here, this is a comparison um, between the uh, base model uh, or the base case and the uh, scenario model or the measure with the gatekeeper system. Uh, we see a huge improvement in the uh, mean travel time of the buses. Um, to around uh, 75 seconds, uh, which is a difference of about 100 seconds um, in, in the difference to the base case. Um, and also the standard deviation is uh, significantly reduced, uh, which is good for a, um, yeah, a, a continuous or a homogeneous um, uh, travel um, or journey. The second, um, measure uh, I present you is a non-directional intermittent bus lane. This is pretty interesting because the implementation in Zumo uh, is uh, yeah, not straightforward, I would say, um, because we need to redefine or modify the line assignments in this area uh, because the bus should use uh, a non-directional approach. So this left turn lane will be used. Um, then this left turn lane this uh, yeah, this restricted area, and also the left lane in this part of the section. Um, so the lane assignment must be changed, and this lane must be cleared beforehand. Um, but because uh, Sumo doesn't uh, support 
uh, changing the directional or the direction of a lane, um, there a second a second lane underneath the original model uh, was introduced um, to implement this measure. So afterwards, the, the lane is uh, cleared and we get a, a green signal for the, the bus lane and also for the, the now intermittent or dynamic bus lane in this uh, later part of the section. So this is the route the bus now takes. Yeah. Uh, we check now this one also can't uh, be used, but um, the results were also pretty good. The mean travel time was also reduced by around 90 uh, seconds uh, in the difference to the base case. Um, the standard deviation was uh, also more improved than in the first uh, measure I presented, and the mean travel time was 82 seconds roundabout. Um, and we can also see in, in on uh, here, this is again the base case, and here we have the, um, the recordings or the traces um, of the uh, measure. And we uh, almost have no uh, delays uh, on, on both um, traffic lights or in the approach to both traffic lights, uh, just some uh, delays that are due to um yes yeah, some waiting time when other buses uh, need to stop at the bus stop in front of the traffic light the last measure i want to present is an intermittent bus lane uh, plus a special phase this is a combination of uh, temporal and uh, a spatial measure um and here we first introduce an intermittent bus lane so a dynamic bus lane that is only activated when the bus approaches um, the section, um, and we also introduce a special phase at the traffic lights uh, of both junctions. Um, so there's a um, special phase at this junction that uh, yeah gives a green time for all three lanes, and also a special phase at this junction with a green time for all three phases. So we also can uh, keep this section uh, yeah pretty good clear, or we have a, a an inflow and an outflow. So uh, the, the traffic flow is, uh, can flow through the whole section. Um, yeah, and here the results are, are uh, also very good. Uh, this was the best case uh, or the best measure that we uh, were able to um, research. The mean travel time uh, was reduced to around uh, or about 70 seconds. Uh, and the standard deviation was significantly reduced to about 14 seconds. Um, and that's more than 100 uh, seconds difference to the base case scenario. Um, and that's also pretty good visible here um, that there are almost no uh, delays um, at all on, the, uh, on both junctions. So to conclude, uh, or in conclusion, um, we had a complex and error-prone task to manage in Zumo, um, especially the implementation in the traffic signal programs was challenging and um, yeah, had to be done manually in uh, Python with, uh, with uh, the help of Tracy, um, because uh, yeah, there's no straightforward um, tool to, to achieve some special phases or some yeah, uh, advanced um, signal programming, um, but we can use Tracy for that. Um, but we also, because of some um, simulation errors uh, or some minor errors, uh, we used not only one model, but uh, sometimes we used more than one model to research different measures. Um, and we noticed some simulation inaccuracies uh, that we couldn't really figure out where they were coming from. Um, especially in areas we did not change up. Uh, so we are not sure about that. But overall, uh, we could uh, fantastically use the Zumo uh, tool to, uh, yeah, to measure and to evaluate a, re a reduction of the bus travel time by up to uh, 59% um, to around 70 seconds um, and uh, decrease the standard deviation uh, and thus increasing the re reliability of the whole uh, whole uh, bus line. Um, so uh, 
yeah, what is to do now? Further research. Um, we need more accurate input data. Um, so this was just uh, a first um, approach to this uh, problem. Um, and the um, loop data from the uh, detector loops in front of the traffic lights were not as accurate as we hoped. Um, so there should should uh, we research some more accurate input data. Um, and also because it's a very important public transport route and the whole section there are um, more than 10 different bus lines um, using this section, but we only researched one um, bus line. Uh, and so the extension to all public transport must be researched. Um, and also an expansion to the opposite direction because we're only researching this um, study, the um, direction into the city center. Um, and also for an, a case study, uh, in the yeah transfer to reality must be researched. Uh, so the implementability uh, is here an important factor. So yeah, I'm uh, sorry that the videos did not load, but uh, I hope it was, uh, uh, yeah, you could understand and follow the presentation. Thank you for listening. And uh, yeah, we welcome any feedback and uh, any questions. Thank you.